Greetings from Janssen's Institute of Technology. On behalf of Mechanical Engineering Department and my own behalf, I welcome all the participants to this lecture series. We are in Module 1. In this module, we have to discuss about Introduction to Mechanical Engineering. The ultimate objective for this lecture mainly focused on what is meant for engineering, what is meant for mechanical engineering, then what are the program outcomes for a mechanical engineering course and what are the job opportunities for a mechanical engineering student. Let's start. So what is meant for engineering means, if you want to explain this concept, I ask two questions. The first question is, what is the ultimate objective for any human being in the world? So the ultimate objective for any human being in the world is comfortable life. My second question is, what is the supreme power in the world? The supreme power in the world is natural resources. So what is meant for engineering means, engineering is a thing which converts all the available natural resources into usable form for enhancing the comfortable life of the human being. For an example, consider a rock. The rock is available naturally. So, with the help of engineering concepts, we can convert this rock into building materials and constructing the dam. After constructing the dam, we can able to store the water. Then the stored water is used for irrigation purpose. So, we can produce the vegetables and other agriculture commodities. So, this will enhance in the comfortable life of the human being. So, what is engineering means? Engineering is a thing which converts all the available natural resources into usable form for enhancing the comfortable life of the human being. Next thing, we have to discuss about what is meant for mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering means dealing with machines. Here, dealing means designing, analyzing, manufacturing and maintenance of machines. What is machine can able to do? Machines can convert all the available natural resources into useful form of energy for producing other machines. So, these machines can enhance the comfortable life of the human being. For an example, coal is available naturally. So, with the help of the machine that is coal based power plant, we can extract the available energy in the coal and convert it into useful form of energy like heat and electricity. Then the heat and electricity are used to drive various types of machines for producing the other machines like car, aircraft, two-wheelers and other machines etc. So with the help of these machines, it will enhance the comfortable life of the human being. So what is mechanical engineering means dealing with machines that means design, analyzing and manufacturing of machines. In this slide, we have to discuss about the program outcomes for a mechanical engineering student while he undergoes through the course. In this course, the student gain the fundamental knowledge from the core courses like mechanics and kinematics, thermal sciences, material sciences and strength of materials. Along with the course courses, he also gained the knowledge from computerized design and product life cycle management for design and manufacturing of various systems like robotics, aeronautical component, marine components, automotive components and other industrial machines. Now we move on to the new frontiers in mechanical engineering. The, when the mechanical engineering student undergoes through the course, along with the core courses, the mechanical engineering students also study micro electromechanical system, composite material, robotics, nanotechnology, biomechanics and aerospace mechanics. So when the students undergo through the course microelectromechanical system and robotics, the student can be able to understand the concepts of industrial automation and various working principles of sensor. When the student undergoing through the composite material, nanotechnology and biomechanics concepts, he can be able to suggest the new material for biomechanic application, aircraft and automotive application and also for energy harvesting process. Now we move on to career opportunities for mechanical engineers. So the mechanical engineer student can work as a design engineer and manufacturing engineer in following area. So he can able to work in automobile, biomechanical, energy utilities, air conditioning, manufacturing and industrial space research organizations. We come to the end of the session. In this module we are discussing about what is meant for engineering, what is meant for mechanical engineering, 
then what are all the program outcomes for an undergraduation program in mechanical engineering then what are all the job opportunities so in the next module we have to discuss about forces and law of motion thank you thank you for listening a warm greeting and welcome you all for this video lecture from this video lecture you can learn about importance of forces and motion myself dr l anush kumar working as an associate professor in the mechanical department in janson institute of technology coimbatore if you see in this page a number of machines car aeroplane lathe etc in this machines cannot create force and not able to move what will happen we are simply say these are waste so force and movement is very important for any work yes right so from this video lecture you learn about what is mean by force and its types applications of force newton's law of motion applications of newton law of motion and i add simple questions for you to improve your self okay yes next what is mean by force force is an agent it is used to move the object or stop the object from its movements force having four characters one is magnitude second one is direction third point of application fourth one is line of application yes force as magnitude what is mean by magnitude magnitude means quantity we say here in this picture you have equal to 10 newton the 10 newton is magnitude direction if the man pulls the block from left hand side that left hand side indicates the direction of motion what's my point of application point of application is nothing but where you touch and apply your force that is called point of application next one is line of action what is my line of action it is very simple where you touch from the touching point you make a horizontal imaginary strike line that is called line of action and finally the vector force is a vector quantity because the force has magnitude and direction the unit is newton next there are types of forces contact force and non contact force in contact force interaction between objects that touch if you see these images without touch the force cannot interchange so these are called contact forces next one is non contact forces that is mag force electric force and gravitational force this not required to touch because these are make attraction and ripple to move the object so these are called non contact forces next it will continue the types of applied force the applied force is very important in mechanical engineering in the applied force it has push pull and impact push means there is one kind of applied force if you push the object that object move away from your side yourself that is called pushing if you see this figure the man pushing create the pushing force the cupboard moves away from him that is called pushing next one is pulling the push and pull is opposite if you see here the man tie the object with the help of rope and giving the pulling force if you pull the object comes towards him next is impact you know about this person yes he is the captain cool ms tony what he is doing what he is done here he make an impact force to the ball with the help of his favorite helicopter shot in this helicopter shot we made a impact force to the ball so the ball went to six in this impact force the contact between the bat and ball is very short that so we are known we are said as that is impact force correct yes next we can going to push yes if you see this figure 1 2 3 4 and 5 in this all machines do same thing is it correct yes this all machines require pushing force yes if you take first that figure 3 this is a stabler machine you know very well stabling machine used for stable the papers and figure 4 a this is the punching machine in this punching machine we can make a hole on the papers and fifth one is you need to open a door you need to give a small amount of force these machines are required very simple forces that same thing will happen figure 1 and 2 in this figure 1 and 2 we are giving <coughs> pushing force to this ramp the man is placed between 
platform and the ram this car is get fully accident and damage so this van we cannot use this van again so we are going to demolish this van so with the help of heavy force the ram will move downwards and demolish the van here it will happen due to with the help of pushing correct okay when you come here you already seen that uh, workshops lifting the car with the help of uh, hydraulic machines yes it is a plunger in this plunger with the help of hydraulic system they create much amount more amount of pushing force due to the pushing force the plunger will move this plunger attached to this ram so the ram will move the car upwards here is also required pushing force to lifting the car here you come for b this is also a punching machine this 4a and 4b are very similar yes in this 4b we can make a hole in thin plates you see your 1 rupee 2 rupee and 5 rupee coin these coins are made with the help of this machine this machine make a hole on paper this machine make hole on plate but pushing is similar from small machine to large machine how much amount of pushing forces required this this is very important here okay right next we go for pulling if you see here the first figure is rokar this is very famous you can see in parani temple in parani temple what he done they are attaching a rope one end of the rope is attached in this rokar another end of the rope is attached in pulling mechanism this pulling mechanism is driven by the machines due to that mechanism rotation the rope pull the car to move upward that will happen with the help of pulling mechanism here you can see the man exercised in gym what he is done he is pulling the rope he is pulling the rope to make he become fit correct yes next you coming for figure 3 a and b i think you know very well about this because this is the roller coaster images mini amusement park you experience in this i think so in this roller coaster what will happen initially they are dragging you pulling you from the station to maximum height of this rail after they are leaving after the they are leaving due to the gravitational force the roller coaster is moving and you get enjoyed and fourth figure if you need to open a door you need to give a little amount of pull so here the pulling is pulling force is similar but amount of pulling force is very this is very simple if you see this see this uh, figure 1 and 3 is very similar to uh, we are uh, pouring the water from the well what kind of mechanism we are used in this well we are used one pulley rope and bucket one end of the rope attached to the bucket another end of the rope in your hands so if you need to pour your water you need to give a pulling force to move the bucket upwards that same principle applied in roller coaster and um, and rock car in palani and this fitness exercise so pulling force is essential in many applications next to go for impact in this impact you can see the face ball player hit your ball very hard with the help of this bat to make an impact force it's trying to home run that same will happen in golf the woman hit the ball very hardly to make more distance in figure 3 you can see the ball or get damaged how the ball get damaged due to the bullets if you fire the bullet it strike the wall and get damaged due to that impact force created by the bullets next you can see this figure 4 the man with pneumatic drilling machine in that pneumatic drilling machine with the help of pneumatic pressure they make a impact force into the drill bit though due to that movement of the drill bit very rapidly that is very rapidly so the impact force is generated due to that impact force the concrete concrete blocks of it easily get breaks easily get breaks when you come for figure 5 due to that impact force human also get affected in this figure if you are take it as running if you are running very falsely what will happen your load your weight acting on the surface at the meantime due to that reaction force 
acting on your ankle and knees regularly you make a practice for running hardly you get pain in knee and ankles very quickly if you want to avoid this pain you need to choose proper shoe and surface otherwise you get a pain quickly so push pull and impact force are required many applications for doing their work next we go for motion who is this may one says correct answer i think so he is our sir isaac newton what he discover he discover law of gravity and three law of motion next slide on which we are talking about three law of motions three law of motions or first law every object continues to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion unless there is external force acting on it second law the force acting on the object is equal to the rate of change of its momentum third law it states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction the figure one figure two examples to describe about newton first law in figure one you place the book on the table what is happen the book will not move because it is under balanced condition weight of the book acting towards downwards and normal reaction acting upwards so totally they are balanced so book will not move if you touch the book in this side if you touch the book in this side and give you a pushing what will happen if you give you a force due to that force the book will move that is newton first law the book under rest condition if you touch and move the book start to moving so this is newton first law and second figure you come here that is the ball if you hold your ball at the top of the tower it is in rest condition if you remove your holding what will happen due to the gravitational force the ball will come downwards that is newton for first law if you take this jet how the jet will move when the pilot open the throttle make the throttle if you throttle the fuels into the engine engine make thrust force due to that force the jet will move otherwise it will in rest condition in rocket what will happen if you ignite it will move otherwise it will in rest condition and third and last one is kite already you know about how the kite is flying due to the wind energy if the wind blows very pleasant the kite moving to the sky very slowly if the wind energy is more high the kite moves to the sky very highly so depending upon the wind force the kite motion get affected so from these examples you clearly know about law of motion and next you see this animation 1 and 2 in this first animation the car moving with uniform velocity but it will stop by an external force if you block it what will happen the car comes to rest yes this is newton first law if you stop the vehicle then you require an external force that is blocking force why the man go away throw away from the car due to the inertia force he didn't wear the seat belt and due to that inertia force he fly away so this is newton first law okay come to animation 2 what will happen the aeronaut hold the screwdriver some obstacles some stone hitting his hand due to the injury she lose the screwdriver she lose the screwdriver with and give some force what will happen the screwdriver moves in same direction and move away from him there is no friction <coughs> in the uh, planet so the screwdriver rotating in the same direction with same force that is newton first law these two animations are clearly explain about newton first law when you go for newton second law what is newton second law that is f equal to m a when force is constant if you increase the mass it definitely decrease the acceleration you can understand from the equation f equal to m a in f force is constant but if you increase the mass the acceleration will reduced you see that figure one and two the example for that equation the first boy give some force to track the 10 kg of load that second boy also give same amount of force like first boy but he have a 10 kg who is moving very fast you know very well 
for first boy because he have less mass second boy have 20 kg so acceleration is very acceleration of the second boy is very less compared to first one come for figure 2 there are two boys <coughs> they are giving same amount of forces to their balls same amount of forces to their balls the first boy hitting the basketball sorry baseball what will happen the baseball win much distance but second boy ball not attain more distance why because of the mass here the mass of the balls are very so acceleration decreases due to the decreasing of acceleration the distance of the balls reduced for second boy clear yes if you go for second one here the masses are same the jet mass is same it will not change if you increase the force the pilot increase the throttle more amount of fuel get inside the engine the engine makes more burnt gases and it will create more thrust force due to that force the masses are constant so it will change the velocity so it accelerate if will accelerate depending upon force so that is the law f equal to m a if m if the m is constant if you increase the force so the acceleration also increases so if you increase the throttle of the jet the jet will move very quickly depending upon the throttle opening of the pilot this is newton second law from this figure note two you can understand next you go go for third law of motion the third law you can see here balloon what happened if you blow the air into the balloon balloon get expanded if you release the air from the balloon what will happen there is an action and reaction if the air comes out this is the action due to that action they make the internal reaction to the balloon so the balloon move some distance with the help of the pushing force if here the air are pushing outside and the meantime the reaction happen inside the balloon so the balloon move some distance if you come for two the man stay on the skateboard and fire the gun if he fire the gun the bullet is released from the gun due to that bullet moving force it will always giving the opposite force so see that figure b the bullet moves right hand side the man moves left hand side this is newton third law when you give coming to the page 20 if you see this figure one and two this is same as that uh, balloon flying is it correct yes when you go for page number 19 the same thing will happen in this figure one and two the satellite moving rocket burned more gases and move it outside due to this pushing the satellite moves upward the same exact reason the balloon will fly that uh, page number 19 first figure if you see here rocket of the engine the exhaust amount that is maximum amount of fuel burned and gases are push outward push backward due to the pushing they get equal and opposite reaction due to the reaction the space cycle move upwards again and again in the sky next you can come in figure 3 and 4 aerofoil aerofoil is attached in the aeroplane wings in aeroplane wings if you initially the pilot move the aeroplane in track straight line track if gradually increase the velocity in the track at the time the air goes bottom of the aerofoil and hit much high velocity and hit much high force due to that force the action happen downwards and reaction acting upwards due to that reaction and angle of attack of the force <coughs> below the aerofoil the aeroplane get lift and fly away from the surface this is also happened by newton third law oh, yes. okay students if you listen listen this advertisement to clearly know about newton laws Practicals? 
Okay, from this fact, you can understand clearly about Newton free laws. If you have a doubt, you can run again this entire video lecture to clear it. Okay, now I am adding 10 questions for you. These questions are very simple to answer. So, make try to make answer for these questions. And uh, we will, again we will join in our discussion section. From this, I end my section. Thank you for your passion to attend this uh, video lecture. I hope you are all understand about the importance of uh, force and motion in mechanical engineering applications. Thank you once again. Next section is handled by Professor M. Madheshwaran in the title of Role of Thermodynamics in Engineering Mechanical Applications. Hello, welcome you for this lecture series. We are in module 3. In this lecture, we have to discuss about role of thermodynamics in mechanical engineering applications. The ultimate objective for this lecture mainly focused on what is thermodynamics, what are the laws in thermodynamics, and how these laws are useful for analyze mechanical engineering applications. Let's start. So, the name thermodynamics originates from two Greek words that is therm and dynamis. Here, therm means heat, dynamis means power. So, initially, how heat is converted into power that is called thermodynamics. Later, all the energy transfer and the energy conversion activities are comes under the science of thermodynamics. The existence of thermodynamics starts from the creation of universe. But the scientists are interested in this field after the successful invention of the first steam engine. The steam engine is invented by Thomas Savary in the year of 1697. But the efficiency of this system is very poor. So, scientists use engineering thermodynamics principles for analyzing the system. Now, we move on to what is meant for engineering thermodynamics. Now, engineers are using the thermodynamic concepts for developing various engineering system that is required in our actual industries. During the industrial revolution, there is a huge need of energy conversion devices in various industries like power plants, automotive sector, steel plants and other process industries. So, engineers use the principles of thermodynamics for developing those systems. Further, in 21st century, there is a huge depletion in fossil fuels like coal, petrol and diesel. So, engineers in need of developing renewable energy systems like solar power, wind power and geothermal power plants. So, thermodynamics also play a role to develop renewable energy power plants. Now, we move on to various laws of thermodynamics. The thermodynamic consists zeroth law, first law, second law and third law of thermodynamics. First, we have to discuss about zeroth law of thermodynamics. The law stated by R. H. Fowler in the year of 1930. So, to understand the law, for zeroth law of thermodynamics, consider a hot body A and consider a cold body B. If the cold body comes in contact with this hot body A means what happens Due to the temperature difference, the energy transfer from hot body to cold body and both the bodies comes to thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium means both the bodies now at equal temperature. Now, consider a another cold body C. If the cold body C again comes in contact with the hot body B means these two bodies are comes to thermal equilibrium condition. So, what zeroth law says means if B is a body, it is separately thermal equilibrium with A and also separately thermal equilibrium with C means these two A and C are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So, so Ta is equal to Tb and Tb is equal to equal to Tc means then the temperature of the body A and the temperature of the body C are equal. So, this is very simple. This is called zeroth law of thermodynamics. These concepts are 
very much essential for developing temperature measurement measuring instruments like thermometer thermocouple etc so thermocouple and thermometers are working based on zero law of thermodynamics then why it is called zero law the first law second law and third law of thermodynamics are stated earlier to 1931 so the zero law of thermodynamics comes later but this explains the fundamental principle of basic fundamental principle of temperature measurement so that's why the scientist numbers it is zero so this law is called zero law of thermodynamics now we move on to first law of thermodynamics the first law of thermodynamics stated by william rankine in the year of 1850 based on law of conservation of energy what is law of conservation of energy energy neither be created nor be destroyed one form of energy can be converted into another form based on that law the first law of thermodynamics stated that when we supplying a heat energy to any system some amount of heat is converted into useful work then remaining energy is used to increasing the internal energy of the system for an example if we supplying an heat energy to a car by burning of fuel then the car will gets moved so that is called work produced by the car then the remaining heat energy is converted into internal energy that is stored in the car so this is the first law based energy balance for a system now we move on to an another example that is human body in human body the energy is supplied as in the form of food so due to our day to day life activities the work is produced then the remaining energy is stored as a fat in our body cells that is called internal energy of the system now so this is the this is called first law of thermodynamics so first law of thermodynamics only talks about energy balance but it have two limitations that is it not discussed about energy flow direction and process feasibility so to overcome the drawback the second law of thermodynamics comes into picture now we move on to second law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics stated in the year of 1850 it have two statements one is kelvin planck statement another one is clausius statement first we will discuss about kelvin planck statement in kelvin planck statement kelvin state the statement then planck refine it so to understand the concept of kelvin planck statement first we will consider an heat engine so what is heat engine heat engine is a device which receives heat from a higher temperature source and it reject heat to the lower temperature sink and produce continuous work output so what kelvin planck says means the the supplied heat it is impossible to convert all the heat energy into equal amount of work definitely some amount of heat is wasted so it indirectly means that the 100% efficient engine is not possible so this is called kelvin planck statement then we move on to clausius statement what clausius says heat cannot flows from lower temperature body to higher temperature body without consumption of any work so to understand the concept consider a refrigerator so if you want to transferring the heat from lower temperature body to higher temperature body we want, we will continuously supplying the work input so then only heat can goes from lower temperature sink to higher temperature source so based on this second law of thermodynamics only all the energy conversion systems like our heat engines and the refrigerators are works so this the second law of thermodynamics state the what is the maximum possible efficiency the system can attain when the system works between two temperature limits so this is called second law of thermodynamics let's discuss about third law of thermodynamics the third law of thermodynamics stated by walter nest in the year of 1912 so to understand the concept of third law of thermodynamics we must know what is mean for entropy so what is entropy means it is a measure of the amount of energy which is unavailable to do work so to understanding the concept of entropy first consider a heat engine so what is heat engine heat engine receives the heat from a source and 
or reject heat to the lower temperature sink and producing the net amount of work. So, entropy is the parameter which state that how much amount of energy is unavailable to convert as an actual work output or useful work output. So, to calculate this entropy, what is the entropy for the source? It is calculated by Q1 by T1 that is heat supplied to the temperature of the source. In the same way, what is the entropy for the sink? So, it is calculated by the formula Q2 by T. So, if you subtract these two things that will give dQ by T, this is the total entropy value of this heat engine. That means, this much amount of energy is unavailable for converting the energy into useful work. So, now we move on to third law of thermodynamics. In third law of thermodynamics, it states that a system approaches to absolute zero temperature, the entropy of the system also approaches to zero. That means, at minus 2, when the system reaches to minus 273 Kelvin, the entropy value of the system also zero. So, consider this picture. So, at minus 273 Kelvin, the, there is no kinetic energy in the molecules. So, the entropy value also reaches to zero. So, this is called the third law of thermodynamics. Now, we move on to how these laws are useful for analyzing our actual thermal energy converting system. So, for the purpose, we consider a four-stroke petrol engine. So, in four-stroke petrol engine, how it works? So, the four-stroke petrol engine consists first of his suction stroke. During the suction stroke, the inlet valve is opened. So, the piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center. So, the air fuel mixture comes inside. The next stroke is compression stroke. In the compression stroke, both the inlet valves, both the valves are closed. The piston will move from bottom dead center to top dead center and the pressure and temperature inside the cylinder will get increased. So, at the end of the compression stroke, the spark plug will produce in the spark. So, the high pressure and high temperature gas get ignited and it push down the piston downwards and producing the work. This is called power stroke. Then the last stroke is exhaust stroke. During the exhaust stroke, the piston moves from bottom dead center to top dead center. During that time, exhaust valve will open, all the gases will go out to the ambient. So, this is the working principle of four stroke petrol engine. So, the animation for the four stroke petrol engine is shown here. Here, how the laws of thermodynamics are useful. So, the first law of thermodynamics here useful for finding how much amount of energy is supplied and how it is distributed, how much amount of energy is converted into actual work, how much amount of energy is taken by exhaust gases. So, the energy balance is given by first law of thermodynamics. What is second law of thermodynamics uh, doing here means, what is the maximum temperature produced inside the uh, inside the cylinder and what is the ambient temperature. So, with this temperature limits, we can easily identify what is the maximum possible efficiency of this engine. Okay. So, these things are find out with the help of thermodynamics. So, what is the role of zeroth law here means? Zeroth law is used for measuring the temperature of the system. Let us consider here another example that is coal based power plant. In coal based power plants, the heat energy available in the coal is converted into electricity. For that purpose, it consists four major important components. The first one is boiler, the second one is turbine, the third one is turn, a condenser, the fourth one is pump. So, what is the use of the boiler means it converts water into high pressure steam. So, what is the use of the turbine means it converts the energy available in the steam into mechanical energy. Then, what is the use of the condenser means the condenser cools the steam and again converted into water. What is the use of the pumps means the pump recycles the water again into the boiler. So, now we have discussed how the system will works. So, when we burning the coal and supplying the heat energy into the boiler means the boiler converts the water into high pressure and high temperature steam. So, this high pressure and high temperature steam goes through the turbine and the turbine uses this 
thermal energy and convert into turbine shaft work output. This shaft work output is connected with a generator for producing the electricity. After the conversion of shaft work, the high pressure steam comes out and goes through the condenser. In the condenser, it is cooled down and again converted into water. This water again sent back to the boiler with the help of the pumps. So in this way, the system works and producing the uh, electricity with the help of heat input. So in this system, what is the role of first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics? Means first law of thermodynamics governs the energy balance. That means how much amount of energy is supplied in the boiler, how much amount of heat is rejected in the condenser, what is the work is produced in the turbine, how much amount of work is consumed in the pump. So this energy balance is governed by first law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics play an another role. That means what is the maximum operating temperature of the boiler, what is the minimum temperature of the condenser. So with the help of measuring these temperatures, we can be able to identify what is the theoretical maximum performance of the system. So with the help of this, we can be able to enhance the actual performance of the coal based power plant. Next, we have to discuss about future energy sector. Nowadays, we are using fossil fuels like coal, petrol, diesel or natural gases for running our power plants and automobiles. So, this will produce huge depletion for fossil fuels and producing the scarcity. So, to overcome these drawbacks, now engineers are designing the new technology for automobiles and also for power plants. So, in the, what is the new technology adopted for automobiles means that is hybrid vehicles and all electrical vehicles. The new technology adopted for power plants are solar based power plants, wind based power plants, then geothermal based power plants or other renewable energy based power plants. So, if you want to use these new techniques, still the energy conversion and the energy transfer process will occur. So, the therm engineering thermodynamic concepts are still applicable for this system for its effective design. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about what is meant for thermodynamics, what are the laws in thermodynamics, how these laws are applicable for analyzing and designing various actual thermal systems. So, we are come to end of module 3. In the next module, we have to discuss about Bernoulli's equation and its application. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Warm greetings to everyone. Hope you all are enjoying the day. I am R. Darshan Kumar, working as assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Janssen's Institute of Technology. In this session, of the video lecture, I will be explaining about the Bernoulli's principle and one major application that we often see in our life. So let's see the outcome of this lecture. So upon the end of this lecture, you will be able to explain what is Bernoulli's principle and how it is related to the uh, air flight. So these are the two outcomes of this lecture. Before jumping into the topic, Let's have an exercise where you will have to predict the consequence for an action. We will be having two videos play and let's see it one by one. So in this first video, I have a piece of paper holding in its corner. And now I am going to blow below the paper, uh, below the point at which I am holding the paper and let's see what happens. Well, that was kind of obvious, right? The paper rose because a higher pressure region was created below the paper and the pressure imbalance helped the paper rise. So, and we will go to the next video. In this video, I am going to repeat the same process, but I will be blowing above the paper instead of blowing it uh, below the paper as we did in the earlier case. Now, you, have, you all have 10 seconds to predict whether the paper will rise like it did previously or stay as it is. The time is constant. Oh, 
Okay, I believe you all have come to a conclusion and let's see the video. Well, it seems confusing. Why did the paper rise again? And the physics behind this is what we are about to discuss today in our session. And of course, this is because of Bernoulli's principle. With that said, we shall have a look at the formal definition. It states that an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in static pressure or a decrease in the fluid's potential energy. Let's break the definition and try to understand with the help of a small animation. So let's consider a flat surface and it is subjected to atmospheric pressure on both sides and there is no pressure imbalance as we could see here. If there is pressure imbalance obviously the plate will move towards the lower pressure region and that is not happening here. So in order to create a pressure imbalance let us induce a flow. Now we will just assume this circle as a fluid particle and it is going to move at a significantly higher velocity to the right side of the flat surface. Okay. So this is the first part of the step, an increase in the speed of a fluid. So when the speed of the fluid increases simultaneously another other thing is going to happen and what is it? The pressure is going to reduce in the upstream of the flow. So this is the second part of the Bernoulli statement. An increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with a decrease in the static pressure. So the velocity, the particle has moved in a significant velocity creating a pressure reduction in the upstream of its flow. So with this we have arrived at a scenario where we have two pressure regions. Uh, since, the, since there was no fluid movement below the flat surface, the pressure remained the same which is one atmospheric pressure. And at the top, uh, top side of the surface we had a fluid particle moving and it created a low pressure region. So these are the two pressure regions. Obviously, uh, due to this pressure imbalance, the higher pressure region will push the low, uh, push the surface or the plate towards the lower pressure region, and this will be continuing until a certain point where the pressure on both sides of the plate become equal again. <coughs> With the uh, concept so far explained, I have a question. How does an aeroplane fly? In one word, we could say that it is due to Bernoulli's principle, and we shall see it in detail. The major component contributing to uh, create the pressure imbalance is nothing but the wing. Like the previous case, uh, if we need to lift the aeroplane, we need to create two uh, pressure regions wherein we have to create a high pressure region at the bottom of the aeroplane and the low pressure region at the top of the aeroplane so that the high pressure region pushes the or lifts the aeroplane uh, away against the gravity. So in order to create this lift, we need a pressure imbalance and how are we going to create? <coughs> So we will just take a cross section look of the wing. It is going to look approximately like this and it is named as airfoil. And before diving into the technicalities we will just uh, see the terminologies related to airfoil. So we have got two points point A and point B on either side of the airfoil. Now this surface uh, 
through A and B on the upper side is called as upper surface and the surface A to B on the lower half is called as the lower surface and next I will be marking the leading edge. Leading edge is the point at the front of the air coil that has maximum curvature and likewise we will mark the trailing edge it is the counterpart of the leading edge at the rear end of the air foil and next we will connect these two points A and B that is leading edge and the trailing edge this line is called as chord line and chord length is the characteristic length of an air foil Next, we will uh, present the air flow direction here. So from this image, we can find that the air is moving from the left side to the right side. Or we can assume that the air foil is moving towards the uh, air. Okay. Next, we have to introduce another parameter called as angle of attack. In order to introduce that, I will draw another line. Uh, which is nothing but the extension of the chord line and another line parallel to the direction of air flow so the angle between these two lines is known as the angle of attack let's not go further deep into the significance of the angle of attack since it is beyond the scope of this lecture but i'll need you to trust me that this angle of attack is very very important in the lift generation or the uh, lift generation process now we will uh, introduce the path lines along which the air molecules will travel while flowing over an air flow. It is seen that each and every air molecule has its own path and therefore they will not cross each other's path. And since this is a streamlined flow, all the particles move simultaneously across the air foil. So we could see that the air molecules or air particles are simultaneously moving parallel to each other. <coughs> there won't be any disturbances amongst the air particles uh, until they meet the air foil. The air molecules at this point, that is when they reach the uh, leading edge of the air foil, they have got to travel across different path lines and reach the point B at the same time as all other all other molecules uh, reach. The length between A and B through the upper half is greater than the length between the same two points through the lower surface. So from this scenario, it is very clear that the air molecules traveling very close to the upper surface will have to move at a greater velocity compared to the air molecules moving closer to the lower surface in order to simultaneously cross the air foil together. And from our previous discussions, we have seen that when there is uh, a flow of particle at a lower velocity, the, it is going to create a high pressure region. And when the particles are going to move at a higher velocity, we are going to create a low pressure region. And this is how the pressure imbalances is created to generate the lift required for the plane to move. Now since we have a high pressure region at the bottom of the airfoil, it is going to push the or lift the airfoil against the uh, gravity and <coughs> thus we have our aeroplane flying. I hope everyone has enjoyed this video and we have come to know about the Bernoulli's uh, principle and its application in aircraft. I thank you all for the session and the next session will be on recent developments in mechanical engineering.
Greetings from Janssen's Institute of Technology. I welcome all the participants to the today's lecture in recent development in mechanical engineering. Myself K Vijay Raghavan working as a assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering Janssen's Institute of Technology. Today we are going to see the application of robots in medical environment, types of robots used in medical environment, future scope of robots in medical field, role of physics in robots application of robots in medical environment wide range of robots is being developed to serve in a variety of roles within the medical environment robot specializing in a human treatment including surgical robots and in rehabilitation robots the field of assistive and therapeutic robotic devices is also expanding rapidly these include robots that help patients rehabilitate from serious conditions like strokes physically or mentally challenged individuals and variety of routine tasks such as sterilizing room and delivering medical supplies and equipment including medications there are six top uses of robots in the medical field so the first one is nothing but the telepresence telepresence is the physicians use robots to help them examine and treat patients in rural or remote locations giving them a telepresence in the room <coughs> specialists specialists can be on call via the robot to answer questions and giving or guiding therapy from remote location the key features of these robotic devices include navigation capability with the emergency room and sophisticated cameras for the physical examination the second one is the surgical assistant so this is the remote controlled robot assist surgeon with performing operation typically minimally invasive procedure the ability to manipulate a highly sophisticated robotic arm by operating controls seated at a workstation out of the operating room additional application for the surgical assistant robots are continually being developed it give surgeon the special reference needed for highly complex surgery including more enhanced natural stereo visualization combined with augmented reality so the scientist developed a tiny snake robot to perform surgery internally the snake robot crawling through your body helping a surgeon identify the disease and perform operation so normally a doctors are using the creeping metallic tools to perform the surgery for various diseases in our organ so it carries a tiny camera scissor and advanced sensor to the proper work so the size of surgical robots allow a surgeon to operate with far less damage to the body helping the patients heal heal faster for example instead of opening the entire chest up during a heart surgery a small incision is made so the robot crawls inside the proper spot so this is how a surgical robot will work so the next one is the rehabilitation robot it plays a crucial role in the recovery of people with disabilities including improved mobility strength coordination and quality of life so the robot is programmed to adapt to the condition of each patient so they recover from strokes and spinal cord injuries and neuro behavioral or neuromuscular diseases so normally the virtual reality integration integrated with the rehabilitation robot to balance the person walking and other motor functions the next one is medical transportation robot it normally a supply it supplies the medicines meals or delivered to the patients and staffs by the robot so it is thereby optimized the communication between the doctors hospital staff members and patients so most of these machines have highly dedicated capabilities for uh, self navigation throughout the facility <clears throat> so in our chennai a stanley hospital has brought the robot robot Uh, which is deployed as a robotic nurses in corona wards 
so the robotic nurses can serve foods and medicines to the covid-19 patients which would limit the direct contact of doctors or nurses with the patients to reduce the risk of infection so in our india in jaipur also the savoy man singh government hospital is conducting a series of trials on a humanoid robot to give a service to the patients to the corona virus patients and uh, a kerala based startup company asimo robotics has uh, developed a three wheel robot that it uh, can be used to assist the patient in the isolations ward so now in uh, china in wuhan also they developed uh, nearly 14 robots they developed so it was developed by the company called uh, cloud mind so it will check it has checked the patient's uh, temperature so they identified the temperature of the patient so it is normally a need of highly advanced and cost effective indoor navigation system based on uh, sensor fusion location technology in order to make the navigational capability of transportation of robot more robust so this is about the medical transportation robot it, it normally uh, it will move forward in front of the patients and it will deliver the food medicines and also it uh, uh, check the temperature so the doctors won't go near by the patients so it never uh, infect the doctors so the next one is the sanitation and disinfection robot which increase in antibiotic resistance bacteria and uh, outbreaks of deadly infections like uh, ebola or corona more healthcare facilities are being uh, using these robots to clean and disinfect surfaces currently the primary methods used for disinfection are uv light and uh, hydrogen peroxide vapors were used for cleaning purpose and these robots can disinfect a room of any bacteria and virus within a minute within a span of minute it will disinfect and uh, <clears throat> next one is the robotic prescription dispensing system <clears throat> so the biggest advantage of robots are speed and accuracy two features that are very important to pharmacy so automated dispensing system have advanced to the point where robot can handle the powder liquids and highly viscous material with more with much higher speed and accuracy than before so the future models of the robots will be in so the advanced robots continue to be designed for ever expanding range of application in the healthcare high precision surgical robot that will operate within a bore of an mri scanner we all know about the mri scanner so in which the robo is fixed and the operation will be performed this is what the development is happening the research is going on and in another one is the rehabilitation robot it is normally which expands the range of therapy exercise and which motivates and uh, physical treatment effects this one also is going on and uh, it is a nano material based uh, robots were designing uh to cure the injected pot in our body and in recent report the global medical uh, robotic market expected to grow nearly 20 billion by 2023 so this is about the future model so next one is the physics concepts in robotics the first one is magnetic so normally the magnets can affect robots in good way by moving them and creating some power so normally in often the electromagnet is used by channeling electricity through already present magnets to help carry things like navigating or compass steel so the magnets is mainly used to lift the material uh, from one place to another place and the time and rate uh, that time in robotics can mean how long a machine takes to do a task how long its power will stay on and how long will it be in service or whatever task it's doing the rate 
In robotics, that means the rate it moves, the rate it completes the task and the rate it consumes the power. The time and rate also affect how one works with the other and how well together they get along when the task are being completed. The next one is the loss of motion. So we already know the Newton's law, three laws. Okay. So the first law in our uh, the first law is considered in the robotics is the inertia affects the machine by controlling how fast it moves and its traction on some surfaces. Traction on some surfaces. And the second law is based the net force affects robots by controlling how much force they can exert and take as well as their inertia. And the third law for the robot is the reaction can affect robots by creating motion allowing for work to be done and response to commands by working with another force of some sort. So this is how the laws of motion which is involved in the robots. And the third, fourth one is the material property. So the material property is very very important. Why? Because while operating or while doing the surgery, the material should be more flexible. Then only it will go around the body and it will work. So the flexib flexibility is very very important. That is the first one. And important thing is the temperature. So the extruding affects robots as temperature changes. So our material will expand or contract causing wear and tear to the machine. And magnetism, it is a, another thing to keep in mind as a metal robot will be affected by magnets but not one made of plastics. So the materials are very very important while designing or manufacturing the robots. And the third thing, third thing is the forms of energy. So energy which helps to do the work, okay, which helps to do the work. So the robot will work with the help of the energy. So the solar energy is used, the thermal energy will be used. The electrical energy is the foremost one. It is a simple power source we get. It is mainly used to recharge the robot battery and which stores in the machine and helps to move or operate the <coughs> robot. And another one is a kinetic energy can be used in robotics to create some movement. To create some movement. So these are the energy which is used in our the robots. So these are the five concepts which were involved in the robotics. So by which the our lecture is over. So thank you all the participants for the participating in this lecture. So for any query, you can ask in the query session. So thank you all for the participating in, a, in, the, in this lecture. Thank you.